In this video, how 120 people with CKD stage 3 and 4 reverse the decline of their GFR just by following a 15 minutes class. Catherine here, you're in for a treat today because I have an amazing study to share with you that I've never mentioned on the channel before. In this trial, 120 people with CKD were offered to participate in an intervention group to change their lives. The intervention was a 15 minutes individual class about the renal diet followed by some lectures. The topics covered were nutrition requirements, recommended food portions, renal exchange lists, cooking issues, renal recipes, and, well, many of the things I actually talk about here on the channel. So question, is this enough to make a difference in stage 4 kidney disease? Can you really change your life in 15 minutes? Well, people in this trial had an incredible result with this strategy. After 24 weeks from the initiation of the intervention, on average, their GFR improved by 2.8 points. And well, that's an amazing result because when you are in stage 3 or 4, your GFR is supposed to decline over time, not to improve. I mean, this is what many doctors still believe today, at least. But you probably already know that I'm not on the same page. Now, what's even more interesting here is that they achieved this incredible improvement without the need for any expensive or hard to find supplements such as keto analogs. I mean, they didn't even use the cheap but effective supplements I usually recommended here, such as acacia fiber or a probiotic. No, they did this with just a diet that's super easy to follow. It's not even that low on protein. Interesting, isn't it? By the way, this is a randomized controlled trial that was published on the British Journal of Nutrition, a very respectable paper in 2022. So I bet you want to dig deeper now. Let's see what they did exactly to achieve the incredible result of reversing the decline of GFR in people in stage three and four of CKD. Just a quick disclaimer before we start, please don't change your diet without consulting your nephrologist. So very first point here is protein intake. Now guys, if you follow me here regularly, you know that I'm an advocate for the low protein diet in people with kidney issue. And what I usually recommend is a very low protein diet in people without diabetes and supplementation with keto analogs. But this comes with some limitation. It's a tough diet to follow, especially because you are supposed to follow it for an indefinite amount of time. And keto analogs are not cheap and you must take them with a very low protein diet. But hey, it works better than anything else if your priority is to keep or improve your kidney function for as long as possible. Now, if you don't like the idea of eating almost no protein at all, there is good news coming from this study because while they limited protein intake in the intervention group, they did not follow a very low protein diet. So they didn't need keto analogs and they didn't need to completely stop eating anything containing protein. As we can see here, protein was limited to 0.75 grams per kilograms of body weight, not to 0.55 to 0.6 grams like the current guideline recommends. What this means is that those in the intervention group were able to improve their kidney function while still eating some high protein foods. Let's take a look. Now, this is very interesting. With the aim of limiting phosphorus intake without reducing protein intake too much, the test subjects were instructed to replace meat with egg white. So no meat, all right, and this is not news, but frankly, it's not very usual to see egg whites recommended. The reasoning here is that they have very low phosphorus and this is important. So only meat and other high phosphorus foods such as fish, poultry, and foods containing phosphate additives were completely forbidden here. Other foods containing phosphorus such as nuts, legumes, and dairy were limited, but not completely avoided. 
what the researchers wanted to achieve was a diet that was easy to follow but effective. And while this study was done on non-diabetics, even those with diabetes can follow this protein restriction. And well, it worked! Now you may ask, what does this diet look like in practice? What did they actually eat? So there is this table here that tells us really a lot about what they are eating on a daily basis. It's all in serving size, so it's also very easy to interpret. What we can see here is that those who improved their kidney function had every day four servings of vegetables and four servings of fruits. The serving size for fruits and vegetables is about four to six ounces. So yeah, they are eating a lot of fruit and veggies here and also of cereals. We're talking eight to nine servings per day here. One serving of cereal is 30 to 45 grams or about one to one and a half ounce. So as we can see here, those in the intervention group were told to eat mostly carbs. These must come from whole grain especially and from fruit and vegetables. Sugar was restricted. Fat intake from saturated and trans fats was also restricted in favor of unsaturated fats. Nothing groundbreaking, right? And this is what makes it special. It worked without making people follow a diet that was too strict. Another important thing to notice here, the caloric intake. In this study, those who improved their kidney function followed a normal caloric diet, which means that they didn't lose nor gain body weight during the 24 weeks of the trial. And this is important because changes in body weight may influence kidney function. So restrict protein, restrict especially high phosphorus foods, and keep calories normal. This is what worked for them. A very interesting result of this diet is the reduction in blood pressure. As the authors pointed out, a significant reduction in blood pressure was achieved mainly, but not just thanks to a reduction in sodium intake. Here, sodium was restricted to less than 2,000 mg per day, which is a very low amount of sodium, but not really different from what's usually recommended. But the authors believe that there is more to the results in terms of improved blood pressure they got than just sodium. Because you see, they believe that reducing protein intake can also help with blood pressure because it helps the kidneys work better. And then there is potassium and fiber. Now this is interesting. In this study, those in the intervention group were told to increase their consumption of fruits and vegetables, which is also great for blood pressure other than kidney health in general because eating more fruit and veggies inevitably means an increased potassium intake. What is interesting is that none of those who increased their dietary potassium intake suffered from hyperkalemia or too high potassium levels. Those following this better diet had, on the other hand, an improvement in blood pressure. Researchers believe that this was due to the increased potassium intake combined with the reduced protein intake and the reduced sodium intake. And well, that's amazing because they can now reduce their need for hypertension medications great to protect the kidneys because you see many medications can have negative effects on kidney health yes many prescriptions are dangerous but this is not the topic of today's video but i've talked about this in my last video up here in also the description if you miss it now guys back to the table for a moment what i want you to notice is that when reducing protein intake and fat intake there is just one energy source that's left, carbohydrates. Most of the calories consumed every day in people who improve their renal function was coming from carbohydrates here. And while this study was not conducted on people with diabetes, we know today that anyone with kidney disease, including those with diabetes, must limit their protein intake. That is, if they plan to keep or improve their kidney function. Because, yeah, you can eat hamburgers and fries every day if you don't mind ending up in dialysis. And now you may ask, what about people with diabetes? Can this diet work for them too? Well, as I was saying, this study was not conducted on those with diabetes. If I were planning a diet for someone with diabetes, I would personally restrict carbs, especially sugar, more than what they did here. 
probably adding more healthy fats. But you see, many of their findings of this study can be applied to people with diabetes too, even the part about carbohydrates. Yes, you need carbs if you have diabetes and kidney disease. So if you want to learn more about what carbs are safe and healthy for diabetes, this video up here is for you. And guys, I believe that what makes this trial exceptional is the fact that this diet is so simple, so easy to follow, and they didn't use any supplement other than vitamin D, which means, in my opinion, that they could have obtained even better results if they also added those supplements that are proven to help. A good renal multivitamin, acacia fiber, a good probiotic. So if you want to study this paper in depth, there is a link down in the description for the full paper. You can even save it on your phone and show it to your nephrologist if you want to follow a diet similar to this. And if you want to learn more about the renal diet, this video up here is for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.